Let's Go Green, sponsored by Airgrid, managing and operating Ireland's electricity grid for a cleaner energy future. Check out airgrid.ie for more. Hello, and you are very welcome to this week's episode of Let's Go Green here on Midlands 103. I hope you are safe and well as you tune in to this week's episode of the show. I know it's probably a busy time for most of us. We, we're in the final run now to Christmas, so I, I hope you're not too stressed and not under too much pressure this week. You get to ease into it nicely. And maybe I'm saying this out loud in the hopes that I get to do that this week to. Uh, on tonight's show, we will have some tips in preventing food waste this Christmas and how to, you know, shop effectively over the next couple of days so that you don't waste any money and you don't waste any food. And um, lots of advice. We'll also be talking, I uh, will touch on the awfully Climate Action Fund. Um, I know in the last couple of weeks we've spoken to Dr. Karen Moore in Leash about the Leash Climate Action Fund, and um, Offaly is is also um, up and running with theirs. But first things first, you might recall that I think it might have been late August we went to Killarney on the show, and we discussed a new initiative there where they were doing this to go cup. A facility where basically the town was going disposable takeaway cup free. And as an awfully woman and a GEA fan, I quite, I have to admit, I never like seeing Kerry getting the, the first on us, but sure, hey, it is what it is. And sometimes it's better to let somebody go ahead and ahead of you to experience any pitfalls and you can learn from those too. So it's it's not always a bad thing. And Offaly now is in the running to pick up Killarney's campaign and Tullamore is looking to become the disposable coffee cup free also. Now, to talk about the nuts and bolts of how this may happen, we're joined once again by John McNally. And John is, of course, Offaly's Community Climate Action Officer. John, you are very welcome to the show. How are you doing, Ashley? Thanks a million for having me in. Now, John, I know you've put an awful lot of time into this. So give, give us the numbers before we get into the nitty gritty. Talk to us about just how significant the disposable takeaway cup of coffee is when it comes to the amount that we're going through here in Ireland. Well, actually, the numbers are frightening. Like in Ireland, every year, there's 200 million single-use coffee cups sent to landfill. So when you break that down, that's 22,000 cups per hour being used in Ireland every single year. And when you look at it, the average use for a single use cup is between 10 to 13 minutes. So the, the, the numbers are frightening. Um, we had a look at it uh, from our own green team in work. Um, staff wanted to see less single use items being used within the organization, within the canteen. Um, so naturally enough, the single use coffee cups were an obvious target i suppose when we when we did the figures then we looked we went through 18000 uh, single use cups per year so it's it's a really obvious um issue a really obvious problem to be able to tackle now initially we thought it's going to be a very difficult um problem to tackle and how do you crack that nut mm. but one of our staff members uh, Sinead from our climate team happened to be down in Cork at a community event and saw the Tuco Cups in action and brought one back to, to Tullamore and was raving about this idea. And as we started to do some homework on it, we thought this is a really good idea. It's a really good solution to stop single-use cups going to landfill or becoming litter, worse again. Um, so we were starting to do a little bit of homework on this. And then, as you say, Killarney. Being Killarney, Killarney got there first. But John, that's Killarney not necessarily. The, the, a, the, Kerry, the Kerry people launched. It's, it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing, did. though. To, to, you know, we can see how how it works in Killarney. We can maybe learn from anything that maybe mistakes they've identified, you know, and um, and I'm look, Kerry is a beautiful part of the world and we always wish them well. Um, but. This, like I have noticed 
since the pandemic that during the pandemic, because there was a fear around um, the trans the transmissibility of the COVID virus and whether or not it would live on Delft, you know, a lot of places went disposable cups, disposable plates. And for some businesses, they have not gone away because let's be honest about it, John, it's easier to put them in the bin than it is to have to wash the Delft. Absolutely. And again, you're right. COVID had a huge effect on this. Like people were starting to embrace their own cups and their bring cups and people were, were starting to get comfortable bringing in their cup into a coffee shop and says, here, listen, I, I want my coffee in this. I, I, I choose not to take a single use a single use cup. And that was great. And we were getting to that place, I think, as a society in Ireland. COVID came along and knocked all that on the head and everything Mm -hmm. went disposable and everything took two, three, four, five steps backwards. But I think now post-COVID, we're starting to get back to that place where people are more comfortable going with. And and what we're seeing is we we just want to see the end of single-use coffee cups. Everybody has two, three, four, five keep cups at home in their press. Like we're saying, listen, bring your own cup. Most coffee shops now, again, post-COVID, are happy to fill uh, a, a reusable cup if, if you bring it in. Like Some people still advertise the, the 20 cents off the, the price of the cup. But we want to get back to that place. But we want to make it even easier for the customers that who may, may have forgotten to bring their, their keep cup from home. That if yeah. they walk into a coffee shop, that they have the opportunity to say, well, I don't. I, I have a meeting down the road in ten minutes. I haven't got time to sit down and drink my cup of coffee, but I don't want a single-use coffee cup. So this is a really, really, really good alternative. We feel to that, and it could eliminate single-use coffee cups throughout Tullamore and further afield throughout Offaly and throughout the Midlands if if this really takes off. So then, John, if if this comes in in Tullamore and um. What is needed for that to happen? What do you need us to do to make that happen? Well, again, <laughs> the good thing about Killarney is, as you say, we can learn from Killarney. And what we see down there is the businesses have really driven this themselves. Like after County Council, are, are, we think it's a great initiative. We've brought it in. There's a couple of other premises in Tullamore that have brought it in on their own, which is wonderful. But for this to be a success, it needs to be done across the board. Everybody needs to embrace it. And I think everybody realises it's a really good idea. The Chamber of Commerce is behind behind the idea. So we just need businesses to really get on board and to get a common goal. I think that common goal is to remove single-use coffee cups. Um, And once businesses are on board, I, I think the, the initiative runs itself. It, it, okay. It'll almost be like the, the plastic bag levy. Like when when plastic bags, when people decided to stop using plastic bags, listen, you can't get your hand on a plastic bag now, which is yeah. great. I was even in um, a large retailer there the other day picking up something and uh, I, I'd forgotten my, my bag. I could sell the bags but and I could picture them there on the hook in the hall. Um, but I forgot when I asked for a paper bag and no, couldn't be found. Um, so we have gotten very, very used to that now. We're going to ask John to stay with us on the line as we continue this conversation around the attempt at least to get rid of disposable coffee cups from Tullamore. It's the start of the initiative here in County Offaly. But we'll take a quick break and we will be back after these. Let's Go Green, sponsored by Airgrid. Managing and operating Ireland's electricity grid for a cleaner energy future. Check out airgrid.ie for more. You're listening to Let's Go Green here on Midlands 103. And so far on this week's episode, we have been talking to John McNally and John is the Community Climate Action Officer for Offaly County Council. And John has been talking us through the project that's underway in Tullamore. So the idea is that in Tullamore, hopefully in the spring, we will go disposable coffee cup free across the town in a similar way to how we covered Killarney do the same during the summer. So, John, you know, we've talked through why Offaly County Council is encouraging business people to get 
you know, just just become part of this particular initiative. But from a, a nuts and bolts perspective, so I love my coffee. I, I you know, I, I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> um, so what do I need to do as a consumer if, when I'm going into the local coffee shop and say I've forgotten to bring my coffee cup with me? So on the practicalities of it all, how is it going to work? Consumer, actually, it's very simple. That you walk in off the street, you want a takeaway, cup of coffee, cup of tea, whatever it is, you don't want a single-use cup. So you just pay a deposit of two euros for a to-go cup. It's a very good, sturdy 12-ounce cup made from recycled recycled plastic and is fully recyclable. They're made in Ireland. Um, They can be used up to 1,200 times. So for, for the consumer, they can go in, they pay their two euros deposit for the cup, they pay their Three or three euros for their coffee. They go away. They enjoy their beverage. They have two options. Then they can go back to any of the retailers who have signed up. They can hand back in their cup and get their two euros back. Simple as that. Or they can go hand back in their cup and get it refilled. Pay their three euros for their coffee or their three euros for their cup of tea, and away they go again. So it, it, it's for. And somebody says it's like um, it's like the two euro deposit on a shopping trolley. Like nobody has any issue going into a supermarket, putting two euros in their shopping trolley, trolley, using the shopping trolley for the 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes they're in the shop. And when they leave back their shopping trolley, they get two euros back and away they go. It, it It's the same. OK, so the same, same, same scheme for, for cups, basically. Yeah. So the, the same principle then applies. Um. I suppose, and this is me playing devil's advocate, John, but one of the advantages for coffee shops uh, and companies to have their own disposable coffee cups um, or to have their own cups in in general is the uh, branding and the marketing opportunity of, well, oh, I saw so-and-so look drinking that that cup of hot chocolate and it looks really nice. I I might go there because their logos tend to be on the cups. So will... Will companies have that opportunity through this scheme? Would there be um, maybe might there be concern that they're losing that marketing opportunity if they buy into this one size fits all cup, if you know what I mean? Yeah, no. And again, that that's something that the different coffee shop owners is telling us. Like we've engaged with a lot of coffee shop owners and hotel owners so far. But but that's a double edged sword, Ashley, and that a coffee shop owner might be sitting at traffic lights and see somebody walking down with their branded cup. And it does, it would fill them with joy to say, well, actually, there's one of my little babies and there you go. But on the flip side, if they're driving out of town and they see two of their coffee cups lying in a ditch mm-hmm. as litter, it's, it's, you know, and people, like there's studies done on this, when people see litter, be it from fast food or be it from a single use coffee cup or whatever, they then associate that litter with the brand that's on the piece of litter. The, the, the first isn't necessarily, well, who threw that piece of litter out the window into that hedge? The, the first thought is, well, that, that company has been black marked as being litter. So mm-hmm. it's a double-edged sword. But I suppose for the scheme to work then, like the, the to-go cups aren't branded and there isn't the facility to brand it because... That's what makes them universal. That for 10, 15 coffee shop, shops sign up in Tullamore. If I buy a coffee in shop number three and later on that day I'm walking past shop number seven, I can walk into that shop and hand in my cup, get my two euros back or hand in my cup, get it refilled and away I go on my business again. So the idea with the no branding is that they are universal and that any shop can take in any to-go cup. Okay, okay. Um, and then it would mean as well as a consumer, if I've bought my to-go cup from X shop, I won't feel embarrassed taking it out in shop Y because it's not the other fella's logo on the front of it, basically. Um, you know, I've, I probably will, feel, as a consumer, will feel more comfortable taking it out regardless of what of, of, um, shop I'm going into or, or coffee shop that I'm going into. So, so far, John, I know you mentioned you've spoken to, to business people in Tullamore. What's the, the feedback been like? The feedback has been very good. Like the, the cost, like, as I said, the, the council's idea is to 
remove single-use coffee cups. Like, like I'm not here selling to-go cups or yeah. pushing to-go cups. So, like, ideally, we just want to see single-use coffee cups gone and see them gone from landfill and see them gone from litter hotspots. But the the, the to-go cup, the, the response has been good. Like, the cost of the scheme is cost-neutral for the for the proprietor. So, from a business point of view, the the coffee shop owner now doesn't have to buy boxes and boxes of single use cups mm. and what we're hearing from the from the the shop owners is that the cost of single use cups is actually going through the roof like from what it was 2 3 years ago they've doubled in price like okay. the coffee shop owners are paying anywhere between 20 and 30 cent per cup and coming down the line, you're going to have the latter levy brought in by government. Mm-hmm. Like government are trying to tackle this issue as well. Their idea is just to stick a 20 cent levy on every single single use coffee cup. Now that's a pretty blunt instrument. Like it might succeed, it might not. But sooner or later, I think within the next three months, four months, consumers are going to be paying up on 40 to 50 cent or a single-use coffee cup. Yeah. So if I'm a consumer and I walk into a coffee shop and I see on the blackboard behind the counter, coffee, three euros, coffee in a single-use coffee cup, 350, I know which one I'll be going for. And like, I I, I love my coffee. I, I joke that I'm fueled by coffee because I drink so much of it every day. And like the prices, the price of a cup of coffee has, has gone, <laughs> it's skyrocketed like, you know. Um, so like I can totally see the, the business sense behind this. So what stage are we at now in terms of getting this up and running in Tullamore? We, as I said, we've gone door to door. We've had face to face um chats, meetings, whatever you want to call them, with uh, a majority of the coffee shop owners and hotel owners in Tullamore. We had a kind of an evening, uh, kind of a town hall meeting going back a week or two ago, and we had some of the the coffee shop owners there as well. So we're kind of thinking that, like, as you said, there's a lot of work goes into this, a lot of coordination. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're kind of thinking, obviously, the Christmas run, as you say, we're, we're a week from Christmas now nothing's really going to happen at this stage into January then listen January's a hard time to get people motivated and even staff could be off and things like that so we're hoping for a spring launch actually okay. that um come the springtime people are will be a little bit more open to yeah. new ideas and new initiatives Plus, it's going to tie in with the with the deposit return scheme for bottles and cans, which we're That's finally getting. Uh, well. Minister Oshin Smith told us on the show the other week um, on February first. So we, we, yeah, it should be yeah. a, a productive spring from sustainability measures. Now we are um, approaching time, John. So before I let you go. A number of weeks now, we had Dr. Con- Dr. Karen Moore on from uh, Leash County Council, and she is your equivalent for, for County Leash. And she was telling us about the, the Leash Cl- uh, Community Climate Action Fund. That is now open in, in County Offaly, I believe. That's right. Yeah, it's um, 100% funding for community groups for projects around five different kind of climate sustainable, sustainability type teams so community groups can apply um for projects under local climate and environment action community energy food and waste shopping and recycling or travel so there's almost 450,000 euros available for community groups in Offaly for this first phase the first 18 month phase so um all the details are on our council website www.offaly.ie and groups have 12 weeks um to get applications in so the applications stay open until uh, up to the start of March. So um, 
yeah. Listen. There seems to be a, de- a delay on the line, uh, John. So apologies for speaking over over you there. But we will get you back in uh, to talk about the the Offaly um, iteration of the Climate Action Fund. And if you have any questions or if you're involved in any group around County Offaly and you think that you might want to avail of or at least apply for this particular 100% project funding, please do contact Offaly County Council and ask to speak with John or his colleagues. John, um, we will keep posted on the uh, to-go cup or the getting the plan to get rid of disposable cups from from Tullamore um, in the new year. But for now, thank you for talking with us on a number of occasions here on Let's Go Green in 2023 and uh, a very happy Christmas to you. Happy Christmas, Ashley. Thanks for having me. We'll be back after the break. Let's Go Green, sponsored by Airgrid, managing and operating Ireland's electricity grid for a cleaner energy future. Check out airgrid.ie for more. You're listening to Let's Go Green here on Midlands 103. Well, last week we talked about decorating our homes sustainably for Christmas and Christmas shopping sustainably and um, in a nice calm fashion without too much stress and, 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 you know, trying to keep the budget down. But we're we're in Christmas food shopping week. Well, it's, it's how I think about it, at least. And I thought we better get Yvonne Carty on to remind us how to approach this week um, with a bit of sense, let's be honest about it, because it's very tempting to go into town and just buy all around us and then come to Christmas Day, realise we've forgotten vital ingredients for the dinner. Um, But it can be a time of year, let's be honest about it. And I think every household is the same, where we end up maybe buying too much and not managing the food properly and end up with loads of, you know, unwanted leftovers. And Yvonne has some fabulous tricks as to how we can keep the turkey lasting longer and get some use out of it that we could do with a refresher on. So Yvonne Carty of Hey Pesto is on the line. Yvonne, you're very welcome back to this uh, Christmas season of Let's Go Green. Thanks, Ashley. It's great to be back. Um, can't believe it's so close now, so we have to get organised. We do indeed. And like, I don't know about you, like you're probably a very organised shopper because, you know, food is your business. But I tend, I, I have to hold my hand up here when it comes to the food shopping at Christmas. I, I do have a tendency to lose the run of myself because I enjoy it a bit. Yeah, I think we all do. And I think the pressure, I mean, when you walk into a supermarket or any shop or anywhere and there's just so much there and you're just going, oh, my God, it's going to be, you know, what do we need? What do we need? Oh, we need that. We need that. We need that. And then there's offers and you're going, oh, that's a bargain. But I would say the best thing is one sit down and plan what you're going to, who you're having for Christmas, um, how many you're having, what you need. Two little tips. One is think back to last year, what you bought and what you threw out. So, you know, look at that. Um, Safefood.net have a very handy calculator on their website for your, you can put in your turkey, you put in how many people you're having for dinner and then you pick what you're having and they have a few different icons on it. It's turkey, ham, potatoes, everything. And then it will tell you the quantities you need for that. And the other thing I'd say, like, buy what you like. Like, if nobody in the house buys, eats Brussels sprouts, don't buy them. Yeah. Apparently, they're the most thrown out vegetables in the world. So I remember now my dad's passed away since, but years ago, um, I always cooked the Christmas dinner and my mum was the baker. So we divide it fairly evenly because the Christmas cake is beyond my baking skills and she does an excellent job of it. And I really enjoy cooking the Christmas dinner. Mm. And I completely forgot to buy the Brussels sprouts on this particular year. And I was like, oh, no, no, they're dad's favourite. And we always have them for dad and this, that and the other. And anyway, we sit at the Christmas table. I said nothing because I figured, do you know what? Let's just not draw attention to it and, mm, and ignore, it. you know, um, that was my policy. But at the end of the meeting, he said, God, yeah, it was great now without the smell of the Brussels sprouts. I was like, sorry. He's like, oh, God, yeah, I hate those things. See, nobody likes them. And I was like, but you, you're the one that eats them every year. Like, why? And he goes, well, now I'd never waste food. It's fuel. We need we need food for energy. So if it's put in front of me, I'll eat it. But I don't actually like them, you know, and like there is that attitude in Ireland. I think that, you know, we eat for fuel because we need fuel to function. Um, And sometimes we force ourselves to eat things we don't quite enjoy, which Mm -hmm. is 
you know, let's enjoy the day and enjoy yeah. the meal. It is. And it's a nice meal. And like if you're doing that, if you're doing your family um, meal, try maybe if if you're if traditionally you, you plated everybody's dinner, serve it family style, because then people will take what they want. Because if you're presented with a big plate of food, you might necessarily eat it all. I remember going to relations for Christmas one year and there was so much meat in my plate. I couldn't eat it. And yeah. then it's wasted. Whereas if you have platters in the middle of the table and people can take what they want. You're more inclined to use then what's left on the platters for leftovers, but you won't take it off individual plates. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe try that. And the same with the dishes of vegetables, you know, that people take what they want and you can always go back for more. That's a good point. And it is in our house. That's how we've always done it. Like we, because um, we like how it looks. For yeah, the I'm the same. <laughs> <laughs> photo like you know yeah. um but that has is to be instagram worthy or it didn't happen exactly sure if it's, if, if it's not on instagram it didn't happen absolutely fun but but it is a good point that you know if you don't serve up each individual dish then your people are only eating what they want and then you your food will go further um yeah you know they're much further and like, you know, the the bin collection schedule and all of that is affected over the Christmas period. So you, you don't want things like that piling up um, in the bin if you can avoid it as well. And I know we all should be composting, but, you know. Well, I was going to say, use if you have a brown bin, make sure you use it. Yeah. Um, because there's something like, I think the figure is 800,000 tonnes of food are wasted in Ireland every year. And a lot of that goes into landfill, whereas if you use your brown bin, it's going to be um, reused as and come back to life as a fertilizer or some or mm -hmm. a compost. So you're better off, you know, if you have a brown bin, use the brown bin. I know not everybody has yet, but but that's one of the things, you know, and have a little compost bin in your kitchen beside your sink and just put your waste in there. Now, if you're doing obviously you can put everything into to it if you're putting it into the brown bin. But if you're doing your own composting, remember, it's just not that's to put separate. food into it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but everything, is, if it's going into the brown bin that's going to be collected, say, every yeah. fortnight or whatever, everything, all food can go in. Food waste can go into that. Yes, now, food waste. Can now, I have a compost bin, but she has four legs and it's called Juno and it's uh, Jack <laughs> Russell. Um, so that's that's my way of dealing with it. Um, but um, but yeah, no, it is it is important. And so uh, when it comes to, so and it is a good reminder to sit down and think, actually, what did we buy last year and not use? Like, I'm yeah. a terror for buying oat crackers. And I do like oat crackers. Um, and I'll eat a few of them. But then there's like 20 or 30 in a box that just get binned. Yes. So like, and we all have foods like that that we pick up because we think, you know, we might have a, a glass of wine and a cracker of an evening. And by the time oh, we get, to, and by the time we get to the evening, we're too stuffed for the cracker, but we do have the glass of wine. Yeah. Um, so, you know, think about that. What got binned last year? And then, how many are you having? Do you have any dietary requirements to be thinking about? Yeah, um, that's always important. So um, maybe, maybe there's somebody coming that is celiac that you wouldn't normally have to cook for a celiac, you know, or a vegetarian or a vegan. Um, and then, Yvonne, like when you're approaching, say, the day itself. Now, I know depending on the households, there might be a nice dinner on Christmas Eve. Um, but when you're approaching, say, the, the big meal for your household um should we keep in mind how do we cal i'm not very good at calculating how much food is needed when i'm cooking for more than myself so can we try and do that a little bit better or is it just about making the most of the leftovers um no i would try that's what i said there is that calculator on safefood.net that would do it. Also keep an eye on portion size because, you know, we're Irish. We, we just, I'll uh, put a bit more in. Yeah. You know, if you're doing rice, which probably wouldn't be doing for Christmas dinner, but just as a, an example, you want about 50 grams of dried rice per person, which when you look at it is about half a plastic cup. It's not an awful lot, but that's how much you need. Whereas we would tend to put in, everybody would probably put in a cup per person. So with potatoes, think about... Oh, well, maybe put three or four per person okay, and one or two for the pot, you know, but don't go overboard. Now, I'm the worst in that because I'm dreadful. I'm going, oh, yeah, no, somebody might come or whatever. But you have to then think about what you're going to use the leftovers for. So like if I have potatoes, I tend to make a big pie on Stevenson's Day if I'm here. Um, and I put the any leftover turkey and ham into it and maybe some of the veg as well. 
um, potatoes will become breakfast. Like leftover potatoes will be fried and either put in an omelette or fried and had with breakfast or brunch on. It's normally brunch on Stevens's day. Now and then, if with leftovers with your turkey and ham, and I know I've said this before, you know, keep them, have them Christmas, have your turkey Christmas day, have the leftovers Stevens's day, and then. I'm more inclined to, unless you're going to cook something with them on the day after, get out the food processor or chop up the leftover turkey, chop over the leftover ham, put them in freezer bags, portion it out and put them in the freezer. And then in January, when we're all broke, yeah. you have stuff to make a dinner with. Yeah. You know, you yeah. could do like you know, um, a turkey bolognese or, yeah. you, you know. Um, you or make a quiche. Yeah. Pasta bake with ham or turkey, you know, things like that. That... You know, and you're going, it's always a it's always a bonus in January if you open the freezer and you go, Oh, look what's in there. Mm-hmm. But and that sorry, just on that, just for it's a bit it's a bit close to Christmas now, but the, for December you really should be emptying out your freezer. Yeah. So that you have space to put things into. And like use your fridge wisely. Keep, make sure your fridge is at the right temperature. It wants to be at about four degrees. And eat the most perishable stuff first. You know, if you have prawns, eat the prawns and then eat the cheese. So I have the cheese the next day because the cheese will hold longer or, you know, if you smoke salmon or whatever you have, you know, try and think about it logically. Um, do things like um, you could make up um, a carnation chicken dressing and have for your chicken and sand- your turkey sandwiches on Stevens's day or the next day, you know, and then I'm trying to think what else we've done with it. Oh, yeah, we did. I did one um, at a class the other night. I did. um it's a South American dish, picadillo. It's it's uh, or picadillo. It's a spicy tomato sauce, and you, so I put the. It would normally be minced, but I put the turkey into it. Okay, you know, so you have a different, not just turkey curries, because everybody is yeah. going. Oh no, um, I have to say do... I, I quite enjoy a turkey curry, but maybe I'm <laughs> on my own on that one. I like turkey, and I think, and I find that that's a rare thing in Ireland. I I, I really I enjoy turkey, so to me, it lasting a few days doesn't bother me. But I do know that, you know, we have to be careful about leaving it out. So like yes, very careful on that because yeah. our houses are warm and you don't want to. So you want to cool it down and put it into the, the, the fridge, but don't put it into the fridge warm because it will raise the temperature of your fridge and then it will affect your other foods. So if you have a cold place in your house to put it, to cool it down before it goes into the, the fridge. Um, there was something else that I was going to say there, but yeah, I'm what I do is I'm not a big turkey fan, not like okay. you. I don't, and I don't like the brown meat. So if I'm hosting Christmas, I do two turkey breasts, and I do one. I cook the two of them on Christmas Day, and we've one on Christmas Day, and then we have the other on Stevens's Day for sandwiches and so on. Yeah, and then by the twenty seventh, I have no waste. I um, I also have a cat who's very happy, no more than Juno. I yeah, have, um, yeah. Um, I um, I'm I'm lucky to be able to go home for Christmas, and um, uh, we uh, I insist uh, it's the one thing I insist on that we have to have a turkey with the legs and everything. Don't like the legs, but I just I enjoy the cooking process of the actual turkey. Okay, and I think it tastes better. But and that's my opinion, and I I I I, I, um, I accept that others would disagree with me. But um, something that I learned from my mom is like taking the, the legs out and the legs off. I'd taken the legs off and, and like keeping them for soup in January. You know, like it's um, and like you say, we're all broke in January. Yeah. Like it's always a long time between getting paid in December and getting paid in January. And it's going to be a cold month, too, yeah. which is why it's hard. Um, so like having like, you know, a turkey in the freezer or, or bones in the in the freezer to help make a broth up for a soup. Um, it's so handy, you know, and it is very simple to do. Like if I can do it, I am no chef. Um, you know, anybody can, as far as I'm concerned. No, it's it's really easy to do. You just boil up your bones, make your stock, and then you you know add what you want to it. But and you'll find a recipe online. You know, there's there's hundreds of things that you can use. Um, yeah, the turkey. I see. I did one year. I got the, I boned out the legs. I stuffed them. I rolled them. And nobody had them. <laughs> So that was me done with turkey legs. I have one year a distinct memory of spending ages on Christmas Eve making up the stuffing and stuffing the turkey and all of that. And then on Stephen's Day, uh, went to serve 
the turkey again and realized that on Christmas Day, we'd completely forgotten that there was uh, stuffing in the turkey. Um, so, yeah. And like, you know, then you know, by that stage, it wasn't really worth eating. Like it just I hadn't managed it properly, put it that way. If uh, that's you could do like if you if you have time in your hands this week, which not everybody has, but just like make up your stuffing in advance, make um, little stuffing balls, you know, make them, and then you have individual ones as well. Mm. So there's no waste on that. Um, yeah. stick, stick them on a tray, um, a tray in the freezer and just take them out when everything's out. Because your turkeys, you want your turkey to rest whatever way you're cooking it. You want it to rest. And especially if you're doing the full turkey, you want to let, you can let it rest for up to two hours. So your oven is free. So throw in your stuffing, throw in things like that. Um, make your croquettes in advance if you get a chance this week. How do you make croquettes? I I, I just, I, I, I this, this is, this is definitely um, surpassed my abilities. I would do what I do is I actually do parsnip and chestnut croquettes. So I would cook my parsnip, mash it, put a bit of butter and garlic in it, and then chop up, you know, the vacuum packed chestnuts you can buy, and they're in every supermarket at the moment. Okay. And make those into little um, rolls, just mm-hmm. form them into our little balls, whichever. And then I dip them in egg and I use panko breadcrumbs. I roll them in that and then I roast them in the oven. Now you okay. could do them in the air fryer this year. See, everybody love the air fryers. Yeah. Yeah. And if you are doing them in the air fryer, because I think the mistake that I make, at least the air fryer is I put things in for too long. So how would you manage you take that? It, yeah, you take about five, 10 minutes off the cooking time and you could also reduce the temperature slightly. So say if you were putting them in the oven at 200, you'd put them in the air fryer at 180. OK. okay. Um, and then I would probably put them in the oven for about if they were going from frozen, probably about half an hour. So maybe about 20 minutes in the air fryer. We we'll check on them, you know, because all the air fryers, do. so your air fryer is so much smaller, it's going to cook so much quicker. And if you were um, a traditionalist and just wanted potato in your croquettes, um, <laughs> the same idea, just cook the potato, mash it, and um, I put something else in it, though, actually. You need to liven it up. I'd put, if I was doing potato ones, I'd probably put leek and cheese or maybe a bit of cheese or something, you know, just. Oh God, no! I couldn't. That'd be too much now. That'd be I. I like you know simple little things. Um, well, put a bit, of, put a bit of flavouring into it. Like put a little bit, maybe a little bit of garlic or even a little bit of nutmeg, just to give it a lift. Okay, okay, okay. The talk me through the the planning of the shopping. If we go back a step as yeah. well, because I think this comes from the fact that. Like in Ireland, when we were younger, a lot of the supermarkets did close for a good chunk of time over Christmas. And now, like most are open, like everything's open the 27th, if not yeah. for a couple of hours in the 26th. Like, And like, there's always a garage open. Yeah, You're exactly. Really stuck. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if you were planning it out, like... Are you just doing this as a week's supermarket shop plus Christmas Day or... Like, like, how do you approach it? What you have to, what I always say to people is just remember the Christmas dinner is just a Sunday dinner with a larger bird. So if you're used to doing a, a Sunday dinner, you know, do the same job. Don't go mad. Unless, even if you're having extra people, okay, just add in a few extra bits, you know, double, maybe buy an extra bag of carrots or buy, you know, whatever vegetables you're going to do. But I would... I do tend to approach it like a military operation. I make up my list. I have to plan out my menu and then I do my shopping list and I will tend to do the shopping list. This is going to sound really sad in in the order that the things are in the supermarket. Okay. So I'll have all my veg in one list. I'll have um, you know my dairy and then I'll have whatever else, the dry goods or anything. So that I try not to double back on myself because that's where you're going to say, oh, look at that. Yeah, I need yeah. that. So I try and do it like that. Um, I would try and work out, you know, let's say if I'm having five people, then I need to buy more potatoes than I'd normally buy or, you know, things. Um, also, don't forget, um, and I think the Tullamore Food Fair is on this weekend and the one it in is on the markets. 23rd. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So you can get all your, like you order your meat and your veg from there and you're sporting local and you're going to get the freshest. And once you buy it on the 23rd, it's going to be fine for the 25th. And that that's a very good point because like all of and I and I all of these smaller markets and there's loads of them right around the Midlands and yeah. um, you know they'll all be open on Saturday and order them give them a call look them up online order them in advance and then you you cut the stress and also 
there's no, and I remember someone saying this to me just after they discovered online grocery shopping, they saved so much money because they didn't fall foul of the psychological marketing. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. The stuff that we all fall foul of when we go yeah. actually in store. So like, you know, look up like, if you're a big fan of, I don't know, uh, pigs and the green sausages and you always have them, Christmas, pick up the phone and call Fergal or, you know, whatever it might be that you know that you're definitely going to pick up at the market or even go online and go through and make your list and click and collect. The supermarkets are all doing that now because I know it for an awful lot of people, they just hate going into the supermarkets at this time of year because particularly this week, they do get quite crammed and that in itself can be very stressful. Yeah, it is. I mean... I did a shop this morning and I was there going around and I was going, I'm going to get it done early so that I don't have people. Now, I, I'm different. I said, I'm For this week, I'm shopping for my final classes and so on. And then I'm not shopping for Christmas. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, that going back to the thing, like the shops will reopen. Yeah. You know, you're not going to starve. None of us are going to starve for two days. Yeah. Like we have enough food to feed an army. In, I can guarantee, you know, in the majority of Irish households, there'll be so much extra food. And petrol stations will all be open on Stephen's yeah. Day for a couple of hours, if not the full day. There will be toilet paper available there. You know, we don't need <laughs> any rushes on bread or anything we might have done in, in previous years. Um, and just like Yvonne says, go in with a list, make a plan and... If you're going in store just to try and save yourselves the hassle, stick to the list. Stick to the list. That would be the thing. Now, things like, sorry, just on the bread, have a bit of flour, have some buttermilk, make up, a. you know, if you get stuck, then you can make bread in five minutes. And I'm sure I know there's recipes on my website for making bread. So, you know, there's making a soda bread, you'd have it done in five minutes. I know everybody says, no, it's only you. No, you don't. You just need a pound of flour, teaspoon of bread soda, teaspoon of salt, and some buttermilk, enough to mix it, about three or 400 mils of buttermilk. Put it all uh, together, put it in the oven. And if you've got children who are on school holidays this week that are, and you're tearing your hair out with trying to entertain them and get ready, <laughs> give them the page from Yvonne Carty's Hey Pesto website and let them make the brown bread for, for Christmas morning. Mm. And there's biscuits on it as well. Okay. So let them off. Let, let them yeah, off. Let them off themselves and, you know. Yeah, I know this year people are saying even more, you know, because we've become more conscious, like buy, make things for people as gifts, you know, make a chocolate biscuit cake this so you can give it to your neighbor. Make some mince pies. Mm-hmm. So much nicer than anything you're going to buy in the shops. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Yvonne Carty of Hey Pesto, thank you very much for joining us. And let's let's go green this week. Ashley, get the name of your own show, right? For God's sake. <laughs> so thank you for joining us and let's go green this week, Yvonne. And uh, a very happy Christmas and you have a birthday this week. So happy birthday as well. And happy birthday to you too, Ashley. <laughs> Seeing as we're twins. <laughs> we both have our birthdays on the 23rd of December. We discovered that a few years back, yeah. listeners. But uh, yeah, happy Christmas and thanks as always for joining us and let's go green. Thank you very much, Ashley. And happy Christmas to you too. See you in the new year. We'll be back after the break. Let's Go Green, sponsored by Airgrid. Managing and operating Ireland's electricity grid for a cleaner energy future. Check out airgrid.ie for more. You're listening to Let's Go Green here on Midlands 103. And it's hard to believe it, but this is actually the last episode of Let's Go Green for 2023. So... I wanted to take a moment to say thank you to everybody who has listened to the show, whether it's on uh, Midlands 103 FM on Monday evenings at seven o'clock or indeed through um, the podcast section of Midlands103.com. I've been absolutely blown away with the responses the show has gotten and um, it's I'm absolutely delighted. I won't tell a lie. So thank you to everybody who stays tuned, who has made a regular appointment in your schedule for Let's Go Green and particularly to those of you who have gotten in contact with me directly about the show. Your comments and suggestions are always very, very welcome. And indeed, you will have heard throughout the year that people who got in contact with me directly to suggest items for the show, you know, have have gotten on air. So 
if there is something that you or perhaps your community, your school are getting involved in for 2024 and it has um, an environmental slant, a sustainability slant, you know, if it's something that you are working on, let us know. We'd be absolutely more than happy to give you some airtime and some publicity and some credit for the work that you and your community are doing. So please do go over to midlands103.com click on the on air team section you'll see it at the top of the screen when you go onto the website and then scroll down you'll see um, a picture first and then my name Ashling O'Rourke if you click on that you can send me an email directly you can also look me up on Instagram or LinkedIn Ashling O'Rourke and the communications coach and send me a message there directly so however you get in contact with us please do get in contact with us and let us know what you're up to and um, whether or not you would like an item discussed on the show. As I said, I've been blown away by the responses. We are well over 100,000 listens on um, the podcast section of the website of the show, which is not a small achievement. So that's one that I'm particularly proud of this year. And that's down to you sharing it with your friends and families. So thank you very much. And I want to do um, a call out. So over the last couple of weeks on the show or a couple of months, I should say, We've had contact from young people, teenagers and secondary schools who are getting involved in campaigning and becoming activists around the environment and climate change. And then others who have launched their own mini companies with a sustainable twist. So I really would like to hear from more schools and more young people who are, you know, taking up the baton and are doing their bit for climate action in 2024. So please do get in contact with me. If you or if you know of a school who is very active in this area, please feel free to send them in our direction. For now, though, I hope the pieces around decorating, shopping and indeed cooking in a nice, calm, sustainable way have been of some help for you as you prepare for the festivities next week. I hope you have a a lovely Christmas, a nice and relaxing time with your families, however you mark it. And uh, best wishes for 2024. Stay tuned to Midlands 103. Happy Christmas.